Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's meeting of the Committee of Adjustment. This meeting is to consider applications for minor variance at consents that's held under the authority of the Planning Act of Ontario. Please keep in mind the intent of our process is to review the proposal that is before us, listen to all the evidence, and then make a decision. This process is not intended to be used to resolve any concerns or disputes that may exist between uh, the town, individuals, or, or any other organization. If a request for a deferral is made uh, this evening, the committee grants such a request. The committee, after consultation with our secretary treasurer, will set a new hearing date. No further notice will be provided unless there are changes to the application. In order to conduct an effective and efficient hearing, we've adopted the following process that we're going to follow. The owner or authorized agent will be given the opportunity, if so desired, to briefly explain to us the basis of the application and answer any questions that may arise out of the hearing. A maximum of five minutes will be provided for this presentation. You need to state your full name and address for the record, and any material submitted to the committee for viewing will remain the property of this committee. Any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of the committee. All persons attending the hearing who wish to support or oppose the application must also state your full name and address for the record. A maximum of five minutes will be provided to make your presentation. All remarks and questions are to be directed to the chair of the committee and any submission beyond the five minutes will also be at discretion of the committee. If there are several speakers that share the same view, please select the spokesperson to present the group's uh, combined opinion. We want to hear your views, however, covering the same points will not advance uh, our uh, decision. The owner or agent will then be provided a further five minutes to respond to comments made by any interested parties and answer any questions from the committee. If the owner or agent has any concerns found in the staff report, particularly with any proposed conditions, this will be an opportunity to advise us. The matter will then be taken into committee for, uh, for a decision and that will mark the end of all discussion. Once the committee makes an oral decision, any person desiring a copy must file with the Secretary Treasurer at this meeting a written request for notice of the decision. A green sheet is provided for this purpose and it's uh, located in the back sheet on the table. Please note that you must make a written request in order to be included in the list that is used by the Interim Municipal Board for the giving of any subsequent notice of any appeal. Written notice of our decision will be mailed not later than 10 days for minor variance and 15 days for consent to the applicant, the owner and our agent and any other person who filed a written request for such notice. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, you may appeal this to the Interim Municipal Board. The last day to appeal the decision to the Interim Municipal Board will be noted on the decision. If no appeal is received within a prescribed time frame, the decision of this committee becomes final and binding and our Secretary Treasurer will then notify the applicant through uh, written correspondence. People attending this committee uh, meeting tonight to be courteous to respectful members of the committee, town staff and other people in attendance. And uh, in order to save uh, you the uh, need to record the proceedings, tonight's me uh, uh, meeting was uh, live streamed and available for viewing, future viewing on the town's uh, live stream page at oakville.ca backslash live. So there's no need to record us tonight. We ask that cellular phones and pages be switched off during this meeting as they tend to interfere with the audio system. And having said that, uh, there's one regret this evening. Mr. Tulowski cannot be here. And is there anyone uh, here, members, that want to or need to declare a pecuniary interest in any application? All right, seeing none. Uh, anyone wishing to uh, defer or withdraw an application this evening? Yes, sir. Sorry, Gary, Gary Neal. Gary O'Neill. Okay, what application are you here for, sir? Uh, it's the one for 1051 Glen Ashton Drive. So application CAV 85 2017, it's number seven on our agenda? Yes, that's correct. Do we have the agenda overhead? Oh, no. Okay. Yes, sir? Yeah, so we were applying for a temporary tent structure. And are, you, are, you, are you with uh, deferring, withdrawing? What are you doing? Withdrawing. Withdrawing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We had, a, we had uh, got approval from, um, actually the town had helped us get approval for the tent to be put up and it was on top of the Trans-Canada pipeline. Right. We had written approval from Trans-Canada saying that's fine, no problem. Um, so we proceeded with the application and last week uh, we were contacted by them and they've changed their mind and say that it's not okay. All right, well we don't need to know the details here, we're drawing your application anyways, right? Yes. As if nothing happened. 
Yes. Okay. Now, what we would like to request is we would not have put in the application in uh, order the I fee. See. You're going somewhere with that submission. Yes. Then. Yes. Uh, I see. But we, we wouldn't have applied for it if we didn't have approval. And since they changed their mind, we would like to uh, get the discount, the 80% discount from the COA fee. Did you ask the TransCanada pipeline people to reimburse you for your costs? Uh, we did. You did? Yes. And? They haven't answered us yet. Oh. Should we wait for their answer first before we give you an answer? Uh, we would prefer that if, if, since you have the ability to do it, that you would refund it, because they we don't know what they will answer. Okay, just we'll deal with that. So your request is to withdraw, and then, uh, and then you uh, want to consider uh, us considering a request for a refund. Yes, okay. cause, because we and the town did our due diligence before. No, applying. I understand. I understand, yeah. but someone else caused that application in yep. part, right? I imagine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyone here this evening have an interest in application CAVEA um, 85-2017 at 1051 Glen Ashton Drive? Okay. Seeing none. Uh, members, uh, I'm in your hands whether you wish to consider the uh, refund request at this moment or uh, when did you make the request from TransCanada? Um, you know what? I'm not exactly sure when. Sorry, I don't happen to have the letter here with me. But uh, so it was why, actually why, done through Out of curiosity, Rebecca. why did they change their mind? Uh, we don't know. We know someone else from TransCanada got involved. Um, and they actually didn't speak to us. They res spoke to Rebecca Cotter of the town who made the request on our behalf. And then they contacted her to say no. All right. Okay, so the request is for a refund, 80%. That's within our bylaw uh, parameters. Who would like to move a recommendation on that? Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll put forward that recommendation. I'll, I'll, I'll support the, um, um, the um, uh, partial refund request. Um, Thank you. This is a charitable organization that does good work within, uh, within Oakville, and I, I think that uh, we should be accommodating Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Uh, discussion on a recommendation? Seeing none, all those in support? No one opposed. Sir, I just want you to go continue going after TransCanada, at least for the other 20%. Yeah. Tell them they got a big discount on that request, and they should at least pony up the other 20% so the, uh, your mission is not out of pocket. Yeah, will do. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, anyone else wishing to withdraw or... Uh, defer an application. All right, so we'll start with our first application, which is uh, CAVA uh, 79 at 131 Leyland Avenue. I, I know. Good evening, committee members. Mr. Chair, Graham Barrett, agent for the owner. Good evening, sir. Uh, let's see, is there... Uh, Okay, is there anyone here that has an interest in application CAV 79-2017 at 131 Leyland Avenue? Okay, so you've read the staff report? Yes, I have. They're, they're recommending uh, at least two conditions, uh, you know, our general condition that things, if it gets approved, to be constructed according to the plan, but they're recommending a, another condition that the applicant, owner, successor, and, to, uh, and register on title an encroachment agreement with the Halton Conservation to address any existing encroachments as set out by the letter of May 2nd, 2017. Yes. Addressed to the committee to the satisfaction of Halton Conservation Authority. So there are certain encroachments that they want an agreement with? Yes. And you're familiar with that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Members, you wish your presentation. You have any questions or clarification? Yes. <clears throat> my, actually, my first question is for staff, if you don't mind. Uh, a year ago when this thing was brought to our attention, it was said that uh, the town was pursuing legal action. And now a year later, it says the town is pursuing legal action. Just wondering, what legal action are we pursuing? Okay, before before we we get the answer, uh, you might not know, so you're entitled to say I don't know. <laughs> you know, in fairness, because uh, you might not be intricately involved with the legal department, whatever action. Maybe that's a better question of uh, of the agent uh, to answer, because he's probably been more engaged in this application. But I'll give you an opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I can honestly say I don't know, but uh, I, my understanding was that it was um, because the building had been built or at least had been under construction without a permit initially, and that was why the legal, legal proceedings had been initiated. So I'm going to... Do you agree? 
Uh, yes, I do. Okay. That, is, that is the gist. I have no idea what I just got answered. What, what's happening? It was built. Was oh, I, built know, I know why. I know why. The question is, where are we? Well, so, I'm, so I'm not 100% I'm not privy to all the legal proceedings that have gone on since we were uh, denied here last May, but um, it has to do with an addition at the back of the garage structure, which was built without a permit. Um, the owner and the designers have worked back and forth with the city to come up with a solution that's agreeable to all, and this is what we've submitted to planning, and planning's comments are addressing this revised plan. There have been some changes to it that have made it more appealing to the city, such as removing a second-story balcony in the back, getting rid of right. other second-story balconies, adding a lot of green space in the front. And now it seems to me that everybody's on the same page, and we're back here today. So do you have any idea whether the, I know it seems from the staff report that this would <clears throat> basically uh, stop an OMB proceeding. Do you know if it will bring a halt to the legal proceeding too, or is uh, Hello, sorry, will question. it bring a halt to the legal proceeding as well? I mean, is this, does this solve both issues? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm going to sorry uh, to 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 try to set the lens a bit straight. We're going to deal with the four uh, tests of the of the variance under the Planning Act. I'm sure there's litigation and there's lots of exchanges between the lawyers. It's been a year, probably even longer, and I just don't think it's fair to ask these two individuals here to give some sort of legal. Uh, analysis of where things stand, which may not be within their pur uh, purview to do. Uh, I, I think what we heard is that there's been some construction that's caused some triggers for some enforcement, and that enforcement has resulted in some legal action, and legal action may or may not continue, and this is on the journey to correcting things somehow. I think that's probably the best we can do. The reason I'm asking is in the last in reviewing the last minutes and looking at the last thing, this, this committee said that basically that we have a series of existing and legally built structures and to use the committee of adjustment to approve them, the legality was in fact incorrect and we shouldn't be doing that. And so in that case, we so, voted sorry, this the, the minutes from? The minutes from the last meeting when this was presented uh, at this, this committee said that to use the committee of adjustment to approve or to bring into good a series of illegally built structures was the incorrect thing to do in this case um, and, that's, and that it exceeded our purview and we shouldn't be doing it and that's why we ended up turning it down. Uh, so as far as I can tell the same thing is still here and I was just trying to figure out has anything really changed from the last time except that now the town is for some reason, reversing its stance without really explaining why, and just saying, "Okay, we're we're okay with these illegally built structures now." But uh, but that's the legal position. I'm not, uh, and the planning position is different. Fine. Yeah. So, it, is the application substantially the same from last year? Um, it's it's similar. Some variance has been removed. Um, there's been plans changed, as I said, to add a fair bit of soft landscaping, removing balcony, um, legalizing existing conditions, the accessory structure. Um, no variances are required to permit construction of the second story addition. Um, it's basically to legalize the accessory structure and a front yard setback to allow a front porch. Okay, just in order to make sure Mr. Uh, uh, Charlebois has all the information he needs to make a decision on this, have you been engaged in the discussion with the legal department that you can offer anything different than we just exposed? Explored? I have not. Okay. I'm just here to address the variances. Okay. So I think on that basis, this is the best information we can get at the moment. Okay. Is there any further questions? Again, is there anyone here that has an interest in the application CAV 79 2017 at uh, 131 Leyland Avenue? See now. Okay. We'll take this uh, matter to committee. Thank you. Okay. Who would like to move a recommendation? Mr. Chairman, I'll, uh, I'll move a recommendation based on um, the uh, supplied information as well as uh, the, um, the history with this uh, application. Um, uh, I'll move a motion to approve uh, the variances that are set before us um, uh, as far as they, they are right now. Um, they do meet the four tests. and. Uh, to the, according to the official plan as well as the uh, zoning bylaw. Uh, I'll uh, put on record that there are no objections from the public and that the uh, town is uh, 
uh, is supporting this application and requesting uh, two uh, conditions to be read on record. Um, that the proposed additions uh, to the existing dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the plans dated March 23rd of 2017 as submitted, and that the applicant slash owner slash successors enter into and register on title an encroachment agreement with the Halton Conservation Authority to address any existing encroachments as set out by their letter dated May 2nd, 2017, addressed to the Committee of Adjustment to the satisfaction of the Halton Conservation Authority. So I think the, um, the town has covered their basis in terms of where the litigation is, is going. Um, and I'm satisfied to move a recommendation to approve the application. Sir, do you need permits or do you need permits? I'm, I'm, that would be the next step, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Did you so, I, I, yes, I apologize. And the third condition will be that approval will expire within two years if the decision has not been um, proposed. Decision has the development has not proceeded and or a building permit not issued. All right. Thank you. Okay. Is there a discussion recommendation, Mr. Shalawa? Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Barrett, I, I'm not going to support this application. The the, uh, the reason being is I I spent a lot of time going through the past notes. The, the minutes, the, everything that was submitted, re-looking at the whole thing, and all the basis for why the town denied it in the first place and why we supported them and denied the motion. I was kind of hoping in this meeting we would get some information as to why these things were, which were mainly that uh, the existing buildings, it had little, little of the discussion revolved around the setback or the balcony. I mean, it probably would have gotten to that, but it never even got that far. So it was all about the construction of these buildings and how it happened. And I just don't have any other information here that changes uh, my viewpoint in any way. Three conditions, all those in support. Uh, and Mark, you're opposed? Okay, so your application is being approved, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's deal with application CAVA 08-0-2017. This is uh, George Savage Avenue and River Trail Common. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Can we get your name and address for the record? Catherine McEwen from Corsiac Urban Planning. Catherine McEwen, okay, thank you. Is there anyone here that has an interest in this application, CAV uh, A80 2017? You do? Are you here in support or opposed, sir? All right, all right, we'll give you, we'll, cut, we'll invite you down in a minute, but let's just uh, give uh, uh, Ms. McEwen a chance here to uh, give us a quick overview of the application. Okay. Um, Subject lands are located north of Dundas. You have to speak in the microphone so we Subject lands are located north of Dundas on the uh, west side of George Savage, east of Shannon's Creek, and south of Hibiscus Gardens. We're here tonight to request a number of variances to permit um, the proposed site plan in an effort to enhance the overall urban design of the site. Uh, we're requesting a variance for blocks two to five to deem George Savage Avenue the front lot line. And we're requesting variances for block six and seven to deem the limit of the amenity area the front lot line. And then for blocks one and two of block seven, due to the irregular shape, we're requesting a maximum setback to the garage of 10, whereas 7.5 is the permitted maximum. And for Block 5, Unit 1, this we're requesting a minimum rear yard setback of 0 0.7 meters, whereas 0 0.75 is permitted. Okay. So what's triggering this? Uh, you said for urban design reasons? Um, yeah, instead of backlotting here, like having backyard condition, just, hang on, I'll put up okay. a better air photo. Due to the site's visibility from Dundas and the prominence of George Savage, um, it was felt by us and going through the site plan process with staff that it would be better suited to have units fronting onto these. 
and you and you discuss with the town the ability to pro, uh, to do uh, sort of severances on a block basis for the different units. Um, it'll it's be quite an unusual process to do. Uh, it'll like how many units are involved here? There's 32 in total. It'll be common element condominium. It's a condo, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Okay, just have a seat there close by, okay. and then we'll invite you down, sir. Um, hi, how are you? My we need your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Salman Javed, S-A-L-M-A-N. Yeah. Uh, S-A-L-M-A-N, J-A-V-E-D, and 1500, S-A-L-M-A-N. Last name is J A V E D. A V E D. Uh, 1500, Upper Middle Road West, Suite 201, in Oakville. Okay. And uh, you're here to speak to us on this matter? Yes. Um, I actually, she, uh, I was concerned about the uh, this area right here on top. Um, my, you, my you you own a unit there, or yes, you bought I, a unit? Yes, I have. Okay, correct. maybe that maybe the other plan that Miss McEwen yes. is going to put up will help. Um, my question is, um, does any of uh, my my unit is right over here? So if uh, whatever they were requesting, does it affect the, this area? Where's not? your unit? Mine is right over here. So you're on the north side of uh, Hibiscus? Correct. Yes. I just want to know if it affects anything on my unit. Well, I mean, this is all on the south side from what I can tell. Right. I mean, anything they're requesting, does that affect any of these houses or here or here? Well, I think uh, it doesn't affect the, 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 you see where the red line is? Yes. So if you push that up a bit, we can put it on the screen so everyone can see. Like so. Here? This variance applies to all the uh, to those to that block and those units within those red lines. Okay. So, so it is for this. this it unit it does well? affect that. Yes. Do you know um, if I may ask what what are they trying to do on these units? Okay. So Miss uh, Miss uh, McEwen can explain. For this these units here, instead of having this the front lot line, this is going to be the front lot line. So that's for zoning purposes. You have to pick a lot line, and uh, it's the way that the units have been set up. The, it reverses everything. It doesn't change what you see on the ground. Okay. That's, what, that's what's going to be built. Okay, so it doesn't visually change anything, correct? Well, it, 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 uh, there's, there's a whole bunch of regulations in the bylaw, right? You've got to pick what your front lot line is, what your rear lot line is. Okay. And if you, to pick the lot line on River Trail Common, you would basically have a different, you would flip that around effectively, okay. right? And the town wants it to look like that. So okay. the zoning bylaw doesn't permit that. And they're here asking, well, can we just allow um, uh, River Trail Common to be the rear lot line for the purposes of this application? Okay, it's, it seems fine. I have no objection. I'm okay. Yeah, and you're on the other side, right? Yes, yes, that's yeah. fine. Okay. Okay, well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak to application CAV 80 2017? Okay, Ms. Uh, Kewan, anything further to add? Okay, we'll take this matter to committee. Who would like to move a recommendation? Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> having um, reviewed the material in the staff report, visited the site, and uh, listened to the presentation, as well as the uh, questions from uh, the local neighbor. I find that uh, this particular application is uh, more technical in nature and does meet all four tests under the Planning Act. I'm going to make a recommendation that it be approved. Uh, bear with me here. Subject to our our standard condition that approval will expire two years from this date if the proposed development does not proceed or a building permit is not issued and subject further to the, con to the condition that the proposed townhouse dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the final approved site plan to the satisfaction of the director of planning. Now, you don't have final site plan approval, but I gather you're close to it, subject to Getting this variance. Here. Okay. Any discussion on recommendation? Seeing none, all those in support? 
No one opposed your application being approved. Thank you. Yeah. 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 No, that's good. Yeah. Uh, application CAV 81 2017 at 367 Sawyer Road. Good evening, Mr. Chair and uh, committee members. My name is Helder Aguiar from Element Modern Dwellings, uh, address 603 York Street in Oakville. I'm here as the agent, the authorized agent for uh, the owner at 367 Sawyer Road. Okay, so sir, you're going to have to give us your name again because you don't appear on our record anywhere, so... Helder Aguiar, H-E-L-D-E-R. Last name? A-G-U-I-A-R. A-G-U-I-A-R. yes. And your address? 603. 603. York Street. York Street in Oakville. Yes. Postal code? Uh, L6L 4B4. 4V4? B. B like four, Bob. like in Bob 4? Yes, sir. When did you get appointed agent? Uh... Yesterday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the designer is actually out of town. and uh, Okay, delayed. you're in the same office? No. No, different office? Yes. Okay, so just send us uh, your client's authorization for you to act as agent. Normally what we like to do is have this all in advance so we can. Okay. Uh, but if you can just email it in, just get your client to say, you know. Yes. And send it into our secretary treasurer so we can have that on the record. But. Uh, just give us a heads up next time so we can reflect that on our notes. We'll do a policy. Okay, so just before you proceed with any need for presentation, is anyone here this evening that has an interest in application CAV 81 2017 at 367 Sawyer Road? Okay, members, I'm in your hands. You've done your site visit. You've read the application. Is there any questions of clarification? Anything you wish to add, sir? No, sir. Okay. I will take this matter to committee and we'll proceed with the recommendation. Who would like to move a recommendation? Thank you, Mr. Harkas. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, having um, reviewed the materials, including a fairly extensive report from, uh, from the Planning Department, I'm satisfied that the requested variances conform to the four tests of the Act. And I'll put forward a motion of approval um, subject to uh, Two conditions, the first being that the proposed dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the plans dated March 24th, 2017 as submitted, and the second being that the uh, approval will expire within two years uh, of the date of the decision if a, if a building permit has not been issued. Discussion on a recommendation? Seeing none, all those in support? No one opposed the application being approved, sir. Thank you very Thank much. You. Okay, application CAV 82 2017 at uh, 1198 and 12, uh, 1208 Lakeshore Road East. Good evening, sir. Name and address for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chair. For the record, my name is David Capper with Glenn Schnarr and Associates. Our address is 10 Kingsbridge Garden Circle in Mississauga, Ontario. Uh, postal code L5R 3K6. Okay, thank you, Mr. Capper. Uh, who's here that tonight may have an interest in application CAV 82 2017 at 1198 and 1208 Lakeshore Road East? Sir, uh, we've done our site visit, read the staff report. Uh, we've reviewed the application. Is there anything you wish to add uh, to our database? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I have nothing to add. I do have a presentation if there are any uh, questions from the committee. Well, I think you evening. filed it in advance with us, right? I have not, but I do have a copy of it to be filed with you as well. Uh, yeah, you should leave it with us. So let's see, uh, members, do you wish a presentation on this application? No, I don't think we need a presentation, but we do, we do want you to leave us a, uh, a copy so we can uh, properly uh, put it in our file. Is that a paper copy or a... Uh, There's an electronic copy right here, sir. Oh, no, we want paper copies. Get you that okay. as well, sir. Yes, so get that as well. Thank you. So uh, we'll take this matter to committee. Members who would like to move a recommendation? Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, first off, Mr. Capper, thank you for being so well prepared. Uh, but this is, uh, this is pretty straightforward. Having, uh, having reviewed the material as well as the staff report, which uh, is in support of it, noting that no one here in the, the public is, is against it, I, I find that this particular application does meet the four tests under the Planning Act. 
I'm going to make a recommendation that it be approved subject to the condition that the approval will expire two years from the date of this decision if the proposed development does not proceed or a building permit is not issued. And subject further, uh, sorry. Two year. So there was there no, do you oh, need sorry, a building permit for your accessory structure? Yeah. We you do need. require a building permit. Oh, yeah, sure. um, and through you, Mr. Chair, there is an additional uh, condition that's being provided by the region with respect to a no well, objection I, letter being yeah. obtained from Conservation Halton. One, yeah, one is that the, well, the second one from the town is that the proposed accessory building be constructed in general accordance with the plans dated April the 10th, 2017, and uh, that a no objections letter be obtained from Conservation Halton prior to the issuance of a town of Oakville building permit for the development associated with this application. Well, that, that, I don't believe that's a condition of planning support it, but I think you, you need to carry forward with it. It's, a, it's within a regulated area. We will require a no objection letter regardless. All right, so the applicant's comfortable with that being imposed as a condition, so that's fine. Okay, All okay right. so that's uh, three conditions. Uh, the substantial accordance with the plans, uh, no objection letter from Conservation Authority, and the three-year time limit on, or the two-year time limit on a building permit. Discussion on recommendation? Seeing none, all those in support? Your application has been approved, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so we'll uh, continue with the application CAB 83 2017 at 1017 Melvin Avenue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, my name oh. is David Capper with Thank Glenn Schnarr and Associates. For the record, our address is 10 Kings, sorry, uh, 10 Kings, Kingsbridge Garden Circle, uh, Unit 700, Mississauga, Ontario, postal code L5R3K6. Thank you, Mr. Kapper. Uh, again, we'll uh, ask if there's anyone here this evening that has an interest in application CAB 83 2017 at 1017 Melvin Avenue. Uh, members, I'm in your hands. Don't think we received any, uh, any uh, letters of objection or any written comments on this application. Is there anything you wish to, anyone wish to ask? Is there anything you wish to add to this? You have you a Mr. presentation Chair, this as well? I have nothing to add other than I have a presentation. Okay, so we'll need that on digital and the hard copy as well. And sure. we'll take it into our file. Thank you. We'll take this matter into committee. Who would like to move a recommendation? Mr. Chairman, I'll be happy to move a recommendation to approve this application as set before us. Uh, I find that the two variances requested uh, do meet the four tests. Uh, it is desirable for the um, development of this land, and I will note that there are no objections uh, from the public, as well as um, uh, planning uh, support of this development. Um, the conditions set forth uh, for this application um, is that, that the proposed dwelling be constructed in general accordance with plans dated April 2017, as well as our regular um, condition that uh, the approval will expire within two years from the date of the decision if the proposed development has not proceeded and or a building permit not issued. Okay, discussion on recommendation? See none, all those in support? No one opposed, your application being approved. Thank you very much, have a good night. We'll proceed with application uh, CAV 84 2017. This is at uh, 50 Birch Hill Lane. Good evening. My name is Mark Lilly, and I'm the agent for the owner at 50 Birch Hill Lane. Okay. I think we had some correspondence on this. Is there anyone here that has an interest in application CAV 84 2017 at 50 Birch Hill Lane? We had some late receiving late comments just want to see if this was one of them yeah mr. Hardcastle did you have a question on the sign um, yes mr. chairman when I was out on site um, I didn't see I entered onto the site uh, directly off of uh, Birch Hill Lane on the narrow paved portion okay and parked in the um, 
and viewed the site from that side of the property, and I didn't see a sign. I've seen some correspondence and photographs that yes. uh, I believe you provided to yes. uh, Secretary Treasurer. Um, I'm taking it from that, that the sign was posted around the backside of the building. Uh, no, so actually, I have a photograph here. Okay. The, the, the sign was posted at the front of the property on the paved uh, driveway in the middle. Um, actually, I have a photograph here I'll show you. And the sign was installed on April 27th, uh, Thursday, I think it was. And it was installed at 4.30 p.m. It's been there ever since, so I don't know what happened. Let's see. Yeah, but um, anyways, it was there this morning uh, when we went by. Uh, what, what day were you there? Sunday morning. Sunday morning, okay. I know we had a lot of rain and winds that day, but... Okay, but we have some evidence proof that it was there and, you know, we'd like it to be there throughout the time, but, absolutely, you know, some things are outside our control, but we also send out notice and, uh, are you satisfied, Mr. Hardcast? Okay. Yes. Is there any questions? Uh, again, is there anyone here this evening that has an interest in application, CAB 84, 2017 at 50 Birch Hill Lane? Okay, we'll take this matter into committee if there's no questions. Anything to add, sir, beyond that? I uh, know. Okay, thank you. Okay, who would like to make a recommendation on this one, please? Mr. Chairman, um, having reviewed the, uh, the staff report and heard the submissions and uh, undertaken a site visit, although missing the sign, um, I will, um, I'll put forward a motion of approval. Uh, I'm satisfied that the requested variances conform to the four tests of the act. And uh, the motion should be subject to uh, two conditions, the first being that the proposed dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the plans dated December 2016 as submitted, and the second being that the uh, approval will expire within two years if a building permit has not been issued. Thank you. Any discussion on recommendation? See none. All those in support? No one opposed your application being approved. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, we'll deal with the application CAB 86 2017 at 106 Georgian Drive. Hello, good evening. Good evening. My name is Tamara Smith, and my address is 106 Georgian Drive in Oakville. I'm the owner with my husband, Ben. Okay, good evening. Good evening. So, uh, in this instance, uh, given the staff comments on this, we would like you to proceed with the presentation. <laughs> okay, great. Um, <laughs> so we've applied for two variances. Yes. And um, yeah, I guess that's why we're here. Do yes. you need more information? We have some letters from neighbors. Um, we've talked to our neighbors and no one has objected and we have some in writing. Well, uh, have you uh, had a chance to reflect on the staff comments in their report? Yes, that's the... the Go ahead, I don't know. So, so I guess that, those are the sun shade surveys that they wanted us to do. Yes. We, we have one done at the highest impact time that it's going to highly impact our neighbors. And we've shown them both, both of our neighbors to our, I guess it's to the east. Yes. We've one shown, we've shadow. shown them the study and they've both giving us emails that we can present to you tonight, but there are absolutely no objections to that going forward. Have you had a chance to share those uh, conclusions with staff? No, we have not. Have you considered maybe uh, the benefit of doing that? Um, we haven't considered the benefit because we didn't think it was necessary. We weren't informed it was necessary. But they can easily get those emailed to them tonight. Well, here's, here's where I'm going. I mean, we don't, uh, I mean, we're, we have your evidence that you did something, and we also have your evidence that it was presented to uh, um, your immediate neighbors, and they're in support, which is good. Yeah. So it should be done. But the concerns and the conclusions of planning conclusions reached by planning staff is they don't have sufficient information, and we haven't seen the information. So you haven't seen this shadow study that uh, was presented to the planning committee? I have it right here. Well, I, I know you may, but uh, did we get it in advance? She said planning committee. I don't know who that 
Yeah. So Kate on the planning. So no, no, just fine. We're we're gonna work through this. Just okay. uh, Let's just figure it out. So so sure. when did you have those shadow studies done? So our agent did these shadow studies. Okay. He present. They, sorry. When were they done? Um, I. I guess Kate must have requested them from our agent. Okay. Our agent provided them to Kate. And on Friday, there was an email from Kate saying that um, our agent didn't, you're supposed to do it for four seasons, like four right. different times of the year. There's certain protocol exactly. for shadow he, Our agent hadn't received the protocol. So okay. he only did June because he felt that's the most impactful time. People are in their backyards and, you know, enjoying the sun. So that's what he had submitted. So she had suggested perhaps applying for um, a, a deferral, um, but our agent believed that we could come with this, show our neighbors and have their written approval and then present that tonight to committee. Well, it would, we, we don't have, uh, we haven't seen any of it, right? And in the absence of that, I mean, we have, we have to weigh the, the evidence, okay? So uh, I'll be, uh, I'll be upfront and say that in the situations like that, it might be beneficial to have the deferral in order to work through that comment to address staff's concern. Otherwise, we have to make a decision and balance the probabilities of any evidence that we have. You know, they have the insufficient information. It would be unfair to ask the planner uh, here tonight whether they agree because no one's had the chance to review it. While it is the highest impact time, there are certain protocols that... Uh, have to be followed in terms of sun shadow studies. And it sounds like you have supportive neighbors, which is great. But uh, I mean, we can certainly continue with the application and see what the committee feels and then deal with, uh, you know, what we need to deal with at the appropriate time. May I just ask a clarification question? So our agent should have submitted something to this committee, not just planning committee. This is where oh, I'm no, a little it's confused. A, it's the right process, but ultimately we make we make the decision. Yes. And it would be helpful if we either had staff review it as our aid to coming to a conclusion or it was presented to us in some format that, you know, uh, other than the hearing, other than the evidence to, through you, right? We haven't seen it yet. And I don't know, I'm not an expert in this, but I generally know so things like this. This the study that was done, nobody's looked at then? Well, I, On I this committee, but I, the planning committee, yes. No, we don't have it. Okay. We do not have it. And, but you know, the, we're, the, we're the ones that are empowered to make the decision right. under the gotcha. protests of the planning I didn't Act. know you didn't have it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I no. thought we were coming. I, <laughs> sorry I, about that. I did no. understand that the planning committee had looked at it, it's though. Not pla it's the planning department. It's planning department. Uh, Ms. Yes. Uh, Kate Mahavich is a part of that, and she's normally here. Gotcha. Uh, and she gave you a heads up that this is one of the impacts that they see and strongly recommend it, I am assuming. She can't force you to do anything you don't want. But she strongly recommended, I'm assuming, that uh, it would be helpful if she had these shadow studies done by the agent. The agent went and did them, but they weren't done in accordance with the acceptable shadow study protocols. They're not the town protocols. A lot of municipalities have the same type of protocol. Okay. You know, you do it during certain seasons. And then they would, uh, you know, assess that and say, okay, you know, with the support of the neighbors, those impacts may or may not be of a concern anymore. We don't know. In the absence of that having come together, it's not a very lengthy process. In the absence of that coming together, we don't have that information to reach that conclusion. That's the unfortunate thing. But we can certainly deal with the application uh, based on the evidence that we heard tonight and based on the fact there's no one here to object to the application from the public. Okay. Well, I saw some hands up there, so it might not... Uh, I, I may have jumped to conclusion that there... <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I think what uh, Ms. Mahavich was saying recommended a deferral because that will allow you to work through those planning issues rather than do them here at the committee. Got you. you and know. to benefit the planning committee? Well, planning department. Planning department. Okay. Yeah, the work committee means that they come to a decision, you know. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, it was a long day. You know, so it's the planning <laughs> department and they, they contribute to our process. Okay. So, uh, do you have any questions at the moment, members? So we'll come back. Uh, well, I'm going to ask you to sit there for a minute, and sure. we'll come back to you okay. because I did see some hands, and it may um, provide you some further information how you wish to proceed with your application. So who has an interest in application CAB 86 2017 at 106 Georgian Drive? Okay. Who would like to come down?
Good evening, Mr. Chair. Uh, my name is David Shannon, and I work for uh, Marika Property Management, M-A-R-E-K-A, -E and we manage uh, HSCC 449, which is at 2360 Park Haven Boulevard, uh, very close to this. Okay, and what's your address, Mr. Shannon? Uh, my address is 157 Keewatton Street, Oshawa, Ontario. So you're property managers for this uh, condo corporation? Yes. Okay. So do you want this to go to your personal address or you're here on behalf of the condo? I'm here on behalf of the condo. Okay. So, and so could you just spell your last name for me? S-H-A-N-N-O-N. -N -N. Thank you. And so it's actually the address of the condo that you want the correspondence to go yes. to? And that address is? 2360 Park Haven Boulevard. Oh, perfect. And that's in, in Oakville. Here. In Oakville. Oh, thank you so much. Do you need the postal code? No, we're good. Thank you. Okay. So this is the, uh, the condo that's to uh, the east, I believe? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. So there, this is, uh, okay. And what's your concern, sir? Uh, the board is concerned that this, uh, this is a second story addition onto an existing detached garage that already exists. Um, it's their position that the Committee of Adjustment is to ensure proper development. And originally this, this area was designed properly. It was designed and approved with, with single uh, level garages, one story garages. This addition of a second story garage is is a huge and significant addition to what is currently exists. Um, uh, significant in the fact that it is requires the variance tonight of uh, two variances, one for the depth of the garage and one for the height of the garage. Now, in the official plan of the town of Oakville, it under low density housing in Part D. It mentions that s single detached units should reflect the spacious and open character that usually associates with these types of, of houses or homes. So it's their position that by adding an additional level to the garage will take away from the spacious area that now exists uh, that would be re removed, the spacious area, and it would be filled in by a second story garage. Um, because of that, we feel it doesn't meet the criteria under the Planning Act, and this application should be rejected. Okay, so so you you understand the evolution of the zoning for the uptown core. Mm -hmm. It, it uh, corner lots, I guess, from the time that the builder presented them, they were always optional for second stories, and I guess over time that changed. And I guess the change is because and this is only for corner lots. Okay. Uh, and there are other examples where internal lots subject to some certain minimum lot frontages, but the corner lots were, were allowed that because they traditionally had a little bit more frontage mm -hmm. and they were corner, they had less impact. And I believe this was a corner lot as well. Corner and, lot. And so, um, but over time, I guess the, the ability to do that was removed. And possibly because, I don't know the answer to, but my guess is because as the community built out, uh, it was determined that it was best to uh, ask applicants to come to the committee or do some other process to address those impacts on, on, on you know, like things that we just discussed today, the sun shadow impacts, so you can have the ability to address them and assess them and mitigate them rather than give as a right permission. So I think that's uh, more or less. Am I correct, Mr. Uh, Charles, on that? Yes, Mr. Chair, you are. Okay, thank you. So in light of that, we'd still urge the committee to reject this application. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak to the committee? Um, my name is Samson Tu. I'm a 2360 Park Haven Boulevard. Uh, Where, sir? Unit 14. What? Uh, 2360? Yes. And what number? Uh, unit 14, I'm at the townhouse. 14, one four? 
Um, uh, town hall, well, it's like Unit 14. Unit 14, yeah, okay. I'm looking directly in front of the, from that unit. Right. From the, you know. Right, you'll they, look down the backyards right to the garage yeah. at the end, yes. Because I'm looking rest, my balcony, my, my living room is directly on the 106, you know, that one they want to build the extension. Yeah, so it's going to be blocking my view. So you want to protect your view? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, it, it's like just like the sun, you know, I won't get the sun anymore or, or not as much. So there is a concept uh, that's evolved over time. I mean, mm -hmm. I understand protecting your right to light. Yeah. You know, because that natural sunlight is very important. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's a concept that's evolved that if we, st the only views that I know that are protected mm -hmm. are views like to Queen's Park and a parliament building. Mm -hmm. But to protect everyone's view in an urban area is a very onerous requirement. Oh, but like, they're not, according to the plan, they're not supposed to build higher than that. Yes. So they're asking for extension. Yes, that's yeah. true. Now, the other thing that my point is, um, like, um, you know, I know, like, I, I saw the TV in uh, news before in BC, a lot of this unit, um, some people use it for as a rental. So I'm not sure what was the purpose of that, you know, extension of the unit on yeah, the, above these the are, garage. Uh, these have been developed as accessory structures. Mm -hmm. They're not uh, livable. I doubt it very much. They have uh, uh, all the necessities to be freestanding residential units. But we'll ask the clarification. Yeah, because like I know, like you know, like some I know some other places people use it as a rental building. So yeah, like no, a, I mean, the, the illegal, illegal rental allow, building. The town bylaws don't allow for uh, residential mm -hmm. living quarters, a second unit, if you will. Yeah. Now, also, like, if one built, and then there might be some other one, some other house want to build as well. Possible. So, like, that, if the one that, uh, like, right in front of me building that, that would be directly, like, blocking me completely. It's and possible, some other we one. don't know how that's going to unfold, yeah. but we're not here to to consider uh, the other units or lots there. Yeah. I mean, we have this proposal before us. Now, there's also, there might be, um, um, the, uh, might be affecting the townhouse resale value because it's blocking the wheel. Uh, okay, we, we have to stick to the four tests. I mean, I, we're not experts on market value and, I see. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't help you on your views. Mm -hmm. We really uh, can't deal with the potential others developing in the same manner because that's speculation. Uh, uh, what about the safety issues? Like, you know, it's just like, you know, in the winter, the slope might be, might be accumulate on the um, roof. That might be, you know, like maybe a safety issues for like for the kid walk by or maybe blocking the wheel that, you know, like big truck turning in a corner. Well, I, I can, trucks can now come around a corner, can they not? Uh, well, if they pass, if a kid walk, walk, walk across the street, they might be walking the wheel, you know, that they, they can't see because of, because of the extension of the view. But there's the, a fence there. Yeah. Doesn't the fence block the view? Uh, yeah, but it's, now it's going to be like, like higher now. Okay. Yeah, if a truck come by, you know. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else, sir? That's it. Yeah, thank you. Any questions? See none. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak to the committee? Okay, well, we'll invite you back. So maybe you can quickly show your internal layout. It seems to be... So we're still stuck with a conundrum about the um, what we do with the sh sh study. I mean, I think... You, you've talked to your neighbor on the uh, east side and they seem to be comfortable. West, you got the laneway, you're a corner lot. Exactly. So we've talked to the people we're attached to, Ray and Darla well, Campbell. Here's what I, I'm oh. recommending. It may be a little bit onerous. It might cost a bit more, but, uh, you know, this is a, a classic case where, you know, if you were to ask for a deferral, I think we would look at it favorably because we want to make sure when we make a decision, we make a, a fulsome decision, you know, with all the information before us. There is a, a deferral fee. Well, I don't know what that is. Six fifty or something like that. But uh, it would help us to uh, get in the information. I don't know if my committee members feel the same way. 
you know, I'm seeing some nods in the affirmative. Um, and I think it gives you also the opportunity to talk to your neighbors uh, at the same time uh, to the extent that you feel there's any issues they brought up that you wish to explore with them. But it would help us uh, knowing that the study of the sun shadow diagrams and the letter from your neighbor is of great value uh, to have that on the record. So we're, we're in your hands. If you wish to ask for a deferral, we can consider that or we can issue a decision however you wish to proceed. Yeah, our hope was to come here with the evidence from our neighbors, not knowing that the townhouse had a problem, hoping that the shadow study would be enough so that we wouldn't have to pay that $650. But we're seeing is quite evident that that's going to be beneficial for everybody. So I guess that's what we're going to have to proceed to do. I think you've reached a, a prudent pause conclusion. So the request is to defer the application. Now, members, you're in support of that, all in support. Okay, so we'll defer. There is a, unfortunately, a deferral fee, but we'd like you uh, to uh, talk to the representative from the condo corporation uh, and, you know, your other neighbor that expressed a concern. Uh, we, you know, I think you need to focus your discussion, and I'm going to say this on the record for everyone. Uh, it's very difficult in, in today's environment to protect rights to views unless there's something very unique and distinct, and it doesn't exist here, sir. It does snow in Canada and snow falls on roofs, so, you know, we have to deal with that. Everyone does. Uh, I think issues of market value and the ability, to, uh, it's not something that we can consider. Uh, you know, if there's some elements of buffering that may assist uh, visual screening, you know, like a tree or something, th these are things that you can explore. I'm just giving you some general parameters to uh, think out of the box, you know. Uh, we like decisions to assist everyone. Uh, but we will make a decision one way or another once we see your shadow diagram. You know, I invite you to make sure that you speak to uh, Ms. Mahavlich uh, and get her the proper studies from your agent. And then uh, hopefully when you come back, uh, we'll see a different uh, presentation. If not, we'll have to deal with it by way of decision. Now, can we submit those letters from our neighbors tonight so they're sure. on, on file? Yes, that or? would be very helpful. But we also, that would be very helpful. I think it's also helpful for Ms. Mahavlich uh, when she has it, knowing that they were satisfied with the peak impact period according to your evidence, which is June 21st. Okay. How many copies would you Just like? Just one copy. Just one? Those, those are the two that are, the two that are, Okay. okay, so we can get written from the rest for the next meeting. Yeah, so we were going to find out when we can get you back on the agenda. Our next meeting is May... June 27th. June 27th. June 27th, okay. And we'll have written letters from all of our neighbors, well, including hopefully our new ones. Well, here's what needs to happen between now and June 27th. You pay your fee. You're not, that's the earliest. Yeah, so there's, there's a couple of things you need to do. Okay, you need to, uh, and it's very simple. You need to get the fee. Yep. Uh, deferral fee to our secretary treasurer. Uh, we're going to hold the June 27th date for you. Perfect. Okay. So I'm assuming you'll pay the fee, you know, in a reasonable period of time so we can ensure that you get on the agenda for June 27th, you know, and we're announcing it here and this is all broadcast so people would know. Uh, and uh, then you need to ensure that you get the, I would get your agent to be in contact with Ms. Uh, Kate Mahavlich from our planning department. She will let them know what's missing in the analysis and then provide it, and then I urge that you provide the shadow study and the letters of support that you have together as a package so she has it, so she can address the issue to the extent there's impacts, and no doubt there is some shadow impacts, the neighbor's comfortable with that. Okay. You know, and that's very helpful for her conclusion. Okay. Great. Thanks for your time, thank guys. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Well, that's what they're called. Okay. Uh, application CAB 872017 at 444 Chartwell Road. Oh, uh, I think we all agreed to deferral, right? Officially on the record? Yeah. Okay, good. Sorry. CAVA 872017 at 444 Chartwell. Those that were in attendance for the last meeting, can you exchange information with the applicant so they can at least un understand who had an interest? 
Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, my name is Michael Ansara, uh, 444 Chartwell Road, Oakville. All right, let's just get our paperwork caught up here. You're the owner? Yes. Okay. Uh, anyone here have an interest in application CAV 87 2017 at 444 Chartwell Road? All right, there's two people here. I'm assuming you have concerns that you want to uh, express to us. So if you can proceed with your uh, presentation. Okay, the uh, proposed building is a garage uh, that's uh, 12 meters in front of the house. Uh, there's an easement under the driveway, so we have to fit the garage between the easement and the creek in front of the house. Uh, the plans show that. Uh, and uh, that's about it. Uh, it's a single car garage. Uh, we've had conservation over at the house. They said everything is okay to go ahead with it. Uh, we're just waiting on the approval. Okay. Any questions at the moment? All right, well, I would invite you to have a seat. And then uh, we'll, uh, well, I invite you to come back. Who had, uh, there was two that showed the hands here. You'd like to come forward, sir. Sure, I've, I've already submitted something. Sorry, we'll, we'll get to you. So let's, uh, let's, let's go with your uh, friend or neighbor there. Come on down, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Name and address for the record. Uh, it's Michael Peck, P-E-C-K, and I live at 446 Chartwell Road. So neighbors of Mike and Linda, just on the north side. Okay. So, and your concern? Um, the, uh, the, you're uh, on the north side, so you're going to see this garage. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, the my wife and I, you know, Mike and Linda are really, really good neighbors. So kind of want to get that out there on the, on the table. And we really understand the desire for a garage. Our questions really tonight were surrounding sort of, you know, the variances uh, that were being asked for. The visual impacts. And also then the visual impact. And I think that actually some of the comments that are actually in the staff report, when you actually look at pictures of the designated property, uh, it kind of in my mind, and I think some of the neighbors' minds, go against sort of what is a little bit in that written staff report. And I've had submitted a little bit of material very late in the day because I only found out about this fairly recently. Um, so what I'd like to do, if I could, and I don't know, does everybody have a copy of what I submitted? Yeah, we do. We got it and, late. And I'm not yeah. going to go through it, I promise. <laughs> there's, 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 no, no, I mean, you're, this, it was is your, really just, this is your five minutes. We'll yeah. start right now. Okay. It was really just to allow me to kind of formulate the thoughts a little bit. Yes. Um, so when I looked at this, and again, we really understand the desire to have a garage there. Our questions revolve around a few key areas here. The, and we looked at those sort of four tated, stated criteria that the region has. And, you know, it's atypical in the neighborhood to actually have a garage that far in front of the house and that close to the road on Chartwell Road. Um, as you drive up and down the street, you really don't see that anywhere. And it's, it's almost like the property effectively hadn't been designed in the first place to accommodate having a garage sitting there. Then when I looked at sort of the, you know, the four variances that were asked for, the, you know, the redeemed minor, I'm kind of a math guy and I kind of look at numbers and for, to me, the percentages are quite material. Like some of them are, you know, 1200% variances in terms of distance from the house that you're supposed to be versus what's being asked for. So it's a, it's a little, putting a garage in a location that's actually quite different than what you see elsewhere in the neighborhood. Um, and then as I read through the staff report, which I only found online today, um, it kind of states that it is limited visual connection to the street due to the vegetation and natural features at the front of the property. This is similar to the property at the north, which also has limited visibility end of quote. Um, and that statement I actually don't think is right. There's actually most of the vegetation in the front as you drive along Chartwell and look on the west end side, most of that vegetation is now gone. And it's actually a very clear view um, into the property. So I think the garage will be seen from the road quite clearly um, when you take a look at it. Um, and then it also says it's heavily screened along the side lot lines. That's really our concern as, as the neighbor. We just have, the, there's these beautiful 12 foot shrubs and evergreens sitting there. 
our whole property is surrounded by evergreens and shrubs for privacy reasons. That has to get taken down to accommodate the garage, unfortunately. And so in our mind, that becomes a very different visual um, than what we originally had. And it kind of changes a little bit the character of the, of the neighborhood. I'm going to put this here. Just, this may give you a little bit of a sense. I took these pictures just yesterday um, as to sort of what the sight line looks like from the road. And so it's clearly that there is a lot of, there actually is a real absence of vegetation there. And there's actually two trees that you see there. Neither of them look to be in very good shape. So somewhere in the foreseeable future, one or more of those, one or both of those trees, I think, could come down. So I think that changes things. Um, the, the, the real end of it is, you know, we, I, we understand the need to have a garage. Um, we want to be reasonable, professional people. Um, we don't want to be, to be mean at all. What we're really concerned about is just maintaining sort of the integrity of the neighborhood. These are very expensive homes. And having a garage situated that close to the roadside, that far away from the house, in very clear sight lines, it just doesn't fit into sort of the neighborhood. And so we were wondering if there's some other way to shade it in with shrubs or trees, which is kind of reflected in the report as one of the requests, um, just to kind of hide it a little bit from passing cars and from neighbors. So I'm not trying to say no to the garage in any way, shape, or form. I certainly understand and respect Mike and Linda's desire to have that. Um, but it really is just trying to maintain the aesthetics of the neighborhood and sort of where everything is at right now. It is a, it's an unusual location. It's a very unique property because we both have this creek going beside us and in front of us, and it changes a lot of what you can and cannot do. Um, and so ideally that ends up kind of being protected. The neighborhood, as, as I think you know, Chartwell Road's a fairly expensive street. Um, I certainly recognize, Mr. Chairman, that you said property values don't have anything to do with uh, the committee. Uh, but at the same point in time, as, uh, as a resident of Oakville paying you know, fairly reasonable property taxes, we would like to just ensure that the property values at least remain stable and that nothing be done in the neighborhood that could cause a problem. So that's kind of you know, my comments. We really want to see you know, Mike and Linda get a garage. I just, we'd like to see a lot of privacy put up around this and making sure that structurally and aesthetically it fits into the neighborhood. And that, with that, I've got 28 seconds left. Yeah, so staff are, staff, I guess you, you are saying more or less the same thing as staff. It's just that the blank wall facing the street yep. they should provide some visual screening. And I think, have you seen the condition proposed by staff? Um, I did see that there were some conditions. I didn't know how, I, did, I didn't know if it actually went far enough, to be honest, in terms of just, you know, I think it was like kind of putting in some windows and making it look Well, nice. they're, they're talking about uh, uh, revise uh, to modify the blank wall. Right. And I don't uh, know what the modify the wall means. Buddy, the streets get to the satisfaction of director planning. That's where you would have a role to say, you know, what you think that should be okay. if this was approved. I mean, we don't know what it is. Yeah. We and just understand that your submission is uh, you're okay with something being mm -hmm. built there, uh, but you need some visual screening because the landscaping there itself doesn't provide it. And the blank wall is not something that, you know, is desirable. And, and planning staff, I guess, you and, you and planning staff are saying the same thing. Sure, if that's... Oh, that's my conclusion. Maybe okay. I'm wrong. Maybe you're saying it shouldn't be approved at all because nope. it's not... Yeah, so okay, that's nope. so I'm reading the situation more or less yep. correctly. You are. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any questions of Mr. Peck? Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Who else? Sir, and we do have your written comments, but you should come down and register your name and address for the record. Uh, Bill Thomas, 447 Chartwell. I live directly across the road from both of these. Um, properties. Okay, and you share the concerns of Mr. Peck, and I think your submission that we have that you noted is here. Yeah, I, my concern, I have a couple of concerns. We had your email today at uh, 10.39. Correct. That's yeah, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to make it tonight. That's, um, but I'm that's when you press send. That's likely. Okay. I'll, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anyways, my concern is I look directly across at, at this proposed structure. Uh, my, my question is, was, was, was this lot, uh, with its easement and the, uh, is it the region of Halton that's responsible for that large ditch uh, stream in front of the property? 
Well, I think so, it's under the jurisdiction of the Conservation Authority, and they and they received the permit from the Conservation Authority. Well, well okay. My fir our first question was, did, did they approve it? Because uh, it seems that the, the the proposed structure will be awful close to that ravine. Well, it, it's and my I, and, it's and my understanding was that had to structures had to be, you know, 30, 40, 50 feet back from a ravine like that. Um, maybe that's maybe that's. Um, not not true in the case of a garage or, or a structure well, that does, doesn't have a report, foundation. The staff reports say that uh, the applicant has received a permit from the Conservation Authority for proposed works. Okay. I take that, uh, and we'll ask the uh, the owner to confirm that, but it seems like... That's been granted been, recently? Well, I don't know recently. Okay. Is a copy of that av available on site? Well, I, I, I don't know. Uh, okay. I don't know where, I mean, I'm not quite sure what the permit process is for the conservation. It just seems person. to me that the this, this structure is being shoehorned into a very small spot in a lot that was likely never intended to have a structure in front of the house. So once this structure's up, mm -hmm. it will block from the street, from, from anyone driving by and certainly from my side of the street, it'll block at least half of the view of the house. So all, you will see this large structure sitting in front, essentially sitting in front of the house. I, I, and I'm, aesthetically, I'm not so sure that was ever intended for that property. Okay, we I may have a question. Uh, we, there, there was, uh, uh, the, the notes we have from the Conservation Authority, it was uh, uh, there, uh, there was a permit but they're not quite sure, uh, and permit number 5492, but they're not quite sure that the existing proposal is in line with the permit that was granted. Oh. Okay, so we'll, we'll ask the agent some comments on that. Yeah. Because uh, the Conservation Authority is recommending a deferral for that purpose. So we'll see. But uh, again, this is regulated by the Conservation Authority. All right, understood. And uh, even if we do grant approval, I'm not saying if we do, but even if we were, if they can't achieve a permit from the Conservation Authority, then, you know, they, they can't do anything. It's dead in the water. Yeah. The, the second concern I had was related to the aesthetic uh, of the building itself. I don't think an architect's been employed, or and I don't think a professional builder's been contemplated to be hired to build the structure. I think it, it's it, it's... And, and my concern is, will that fit in with the rest of the buildings and the houses that have been renovated in the area? And um, are we uh, would it about be consistent? The whole structure, or are we talking about the whole structure or about uh, the, the, the one wall phase that staff noted? Likely concern? the whole structure, whatever is visible from the road. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, all of us uh, uh, from time to time have likely built small structures in our backyards, sheds for, for tools and lawnmowers and stuff. but. To build something yourself in your front yard, uh, I, I have some concerns about, and I think well, most, I, most neighbors would I, I don't would think too. we could regulate sort of how something looks, or, you know, what color paint you put on, uh, or if you use shingles versus uh, different treatment. Uh, I think staff staff uh, have identified a concern consistent with Mr. Pex that says, you know, the way it presents itself from the street is something they they have an interest in from a planning perspective. Right. Um, and you know who builds it or what materials are used beyond that you know they're all approved for construction in Canada I'm assuming and uh, and there's a building permit process that would ensure that uh, life safety and all that is taken care of okay I don't agree with you but okay well, I also hear your the, point you feel that uh, more could be done architecturally or yeah you know, as long it, will it be consistent it? with the rest of the buildings and renovations and new structures on the street Okay, your point's well taken. Uh, and then the final point is, the, is the variance uh, application minor? Uh, I'd suggest it's not. It's uh, one of the requests for variance is 19.1 meters. I think Michael referenced that. that. I don't know how you can consider that a minor variance. Is that considered to be minor? Well, uh, again, um, it's the, the I, I will ask the, uh, the owner to respond to that, but it seems to be, the location of the accessory structure to be away from the easement that's created it. And then exactly. because you go further away from the front face of the wall, then you get this 
this uh, problem. I guess with the easement, if he had a desire, if he had this, if it had his druthers to build a accessory structure, he probably would not want to build it as far away as he's been forced to build it. That's my guess. And then to my point, that perhaps this this lot just there, there there isn't room for a structure like that in the front yard. Okay, so you don't support it, uh, the structure, Correct. which is a little bit different position than your neighbor. Correct. Okay, thank you. You're Any welcome. questions? Yes. Um, <clears throat> just to clarify, in my mind, uh, if the structure, if the same structure was just backed up closer to the home. It sounded to me like you had the same problem. You just didn't want to see a garage in front of the home. All your thing was always about the view from the road. Is that the case? I mean, yeah, my, yeah, my concern is is the, the, the structure will sit essentially in front of the house. Right. With And, it, and it's being shoehorned into a very small space that likely I, I was never intended but, okay. to but accommodate a garage. I don't think that lot was ever, ever intended to accommodate a garage. So they're shoehorning it in here. In, I think it'll be an awkward looking structure that'll block the front view of that house. Right. And from what I understand, the aesthetics of the building itself won't fit in with the neighborhood. So from uh, my neighboring structures. Yeah, from my read of this, the, the, the ability to create the garage in front of the house is a permitted right uh, by the owner. What the difficulty he has is conservation is saying, right. you, know, you can't put it where you want it, you have to push it out. Right. So I just wanted to address that point there because I, I, don't, sure. I don't think we can you know, make a comment about whether you can put a garage in front of there because he can. The question is, can he put it that far in front of his building? Right, I mean, some lots deal? will accommodate yeah. certain things and some lots won't. And in, in this particular situation, I don't think this lot is really set up to accommodate a garage. And the other thing, and I'm not trying to defend here, but there's there's a, an awful lot of material on the website as to uh, the construction of, of the garage, what materials are going to be used, uh, whether it's aluminum fascia, da da da. So, uh, on there, what? On whose? On there, there's there's a lot of information that will be on the. It's attached to the application. Oh, okay. You you were saying you weren't sure what materials will be built. It actually right. lists every single material, um, and right. goes into uh, quite a bit of detail with you know, dimensioned and everything. Right. Again, you, you may not agree with the materials being used, but it is there. I just sure. wanted to point that out to you. Sure. Well, it, that, it sounds like your planning department has some concerns about the front-facing wall as well, the aesthetic side of it. Yeah, that's, that's and true. And they're suggesting a window or something goes in to make it more aesthetic. So I'm not the only one that's recognized there's a, an issue with the aesthetic oh, no, no, nature and, of the building. You're absolutely right. This is what we said. Uh, our discussion was, you know, the, the concern of your neighbor, Mr. Peck, was you know, I don't want to oversimplify it, but uh, sort of seemed to be in line with the planning department's the visual presentation on the street, sure. and that's the north face. And and, and I was uh, I was uh, I'm having hand signals from the back there. I'm supposed to understand that, but I, I think you're saying we're slightly different in terms. Yeah, of our, slightly yeah. different. But in any event, I I, I guess your position is uh, you rather not see it there because the lot uh, is just not big enough to accommodate that. It Otherwise, you would have built it in the beginning. It seems to be. It seems to me that it's being forced into a lot that really wasn't isn't 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 designed right. no, to we accommodate. Heard, and then and then at the end you said uh, you, you share the same concerns on the north face. So you got me a little bit confused. You would rather not see it, but if something gets approved, then you support modifying the north face to make it. I mean, better. if you're going to approve it, yeah. I mean, let's try and make this thing as visually consistent okay. or appealing as possible. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Any further questions? Thank you, sir. Uh, you don't get another shot at it, but if you're going to be quick, we'll give you uh, some, you know, we want to make sure we get all the evidence, but I'm not going to give you more than a question or it, 30 seconds. It, uh, what I would, the point I was trying to get across is our concern is both the roadside and the north side view. Yeah. So when you kind of said that Mr. Peck's concern was kind of the, the roadside view, it's actually protecting on both sides, no, the I, north yeah, side I, I, yes, as I well you. as, right, because there, there's like 15 feet of shrubs that are going to be taken out that are very kind of beautiful right now. Thank you. So I just want to make sure that clarification. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any, anyone else wishing to speak to the committee on this application? Okay, sir. Can you answer the question from the Conservation Authority first? Okay, and what, what was that? <laughs> okay, the, you had a permit, and the permit number is 5492, and I think you work hard to get it. But in their comments to us, they're saying, you got to defer this because we're not quite sure 
whether the building where you located it, the proposed structure, is in line with the permit. You may need to re uh, redo your permit. No, it's the exact uh, exact thing that they came out to view. I'm surprised they said that. Uh, he told the, told me all the variances and everything. They both came out. Um, now, what what happened was is uh, as of uh, 2017, everything became uh, metric. So I had to change all the plans. So I think 2017, they all became metric. I became metric years ago. Well, no, as of the plans, I, I guess. Uh, well, there are requirements for plans. Yes, the requirements. So there's a conversion. Factor. There was a conversion. So I think maybe that's what they're talking about. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I would just note that one of the drawings in the submission package that we have, well, and we're looking at it on, on, on the uh, screen, is the Halton Region Conservation Approval Stamp for that. Uh, yes. Which is the same date that was noted in the conservation uh, letter that we received. Oh, okay. Oh, so there goes. So, what's your idea. conclusion on that? So, there's my conclusion. Uh, well, there so is on, none. I just obviously. want to understand what does oh, that mean me. to you. Well, well th that tells me that we're looking at the same drawing that the conservation authority did when they issued the permit. Yeah, so that that makes sense. I mean, there, there is likely other additional materials that were submitted to the Conservation Authority in support of the permit, but this is certainly representative of one of the drawings that was stamped approved. Well, there's a difference between the front yard. Sir, I guess what we're saying is, uh, if we proceed with this application, okay, and give a decision on it, well, however way it proceeds, if you have a right to exercise an appeal if it's refused or if it's approved and you can't get your permit, you're going to have to start the process again. Yeah. That's the risk you take because the conservation authority is saying defer it because there is a discrepancy and they note uh, in their comments here, I won't read it to you, but there is a survey drawing by Fred Cunningham uh, and includes a front yard setback of 9.6 meters and they give you the imperial numbers. It differs from the calculated 8.8, .8, so there's a discrepancy of about 0.8 of a meter. Oh. Okay. Did you oh. read these comments? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't have a chance to, no. Uh, yeah, so, well, I'm gonna... so, there, so, you know, although they do reference here that they have a stamped drawing, but it was stamped based on whatever survey they had, but uh, based on more current information, they're saying that perhaps there's a discrepancy, and, you know, and it's, a portion of it deals with conversion and if we proceed with an approval today, like I said, then the permit you have may not be valid. You got to redo it again, and they may not be the same variance as you sought. And if, if there's a refusal, you can exercise appeal rights. So we're really in your hands how you wish to proceed. Well, if, if, uh, if, if, if it has to be deferred, then for sure. If, uh... Well, it's not us recommending, it's conservation theory. We're prepared to uh, deal with this matter and issue a decision. Oh, well, uh... I know, geez. it's like a Hobson's choice. Uh, well, I'd like you to make the decision. Okay, well, we'll proceed. We'll take this application. And is there any fur anything further you wish to add to the application, sir? Oh, just that... You heard that, some uh, of the visual comments, and you heard uh, yeah, the planning uh, department. Yeah, about the, the, um, the garage not... S or the, the area not suiting the garage. When we had first moved into the house 14 years ago, or whatever it was... 16 years ago, uh, that was the basis on moving into the house, was if we could build a garage. So we had come to the town, and they said, yes, that's exactly the spot where the garage is supposed to be. Uh, Mike's garage is kind of the same. It's, uh, it's put right in front of the house, kind of, you know, and it's, you know, kind of the same thing. I'd also like to point out that the pictures that Mike did show, uh, there's no leaves on the tree. So, you know, it's, it's really, it's pretty, uh, that walnut in front is uh, pretty voluptuous. So once the leaves go on that, you know, it's, it's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of greenery in the front. Uh, I did happen to clear out the creek. There was, uh, we usually clear it out 
from people passing and all that and throwing out garbage and there was ivy running through it going up the walnut tree we wanted to save the walnut so there was about 700 feet of this ivy so we had to clear all that out and it's finally making its way back in front so so you're, like to point you're prepared that out to work too. with staff on the facade that they recommended yes uh, I, I just uh, also oh, the the window well, no, there, yeah, we, I don't know what it is, but staff are recommending that uh, revised modification to the blank wall on the Yeah, I, I agree. I think we should put a window in there. I never I, I don't know if it's a window. I, I'm There's, pretty sure that's what... Uh, I, I don't know. They're saying modify that facade. So if it's a window, it would be satisfaction of the director of planning. I'm not going to tell the director whether the window should satisfy him. You have to work with a director to figure out what that level of satisfaction is. Oh, I see. I'm willing to work. Sure, for sure. Okay, I, the reason why I ask is that's a recommended condition of approval, and in fairness, we have to give you a chance to respond to that. Oh, so no, you're, definitely. Okay. It's just over, over Anything it was that, sir? We'll take this matter to committee now. Oh, uh, yeah, I'd also like to add that a lot of the street has these garages in front of their house. I don't know, uh, like uh, two doors down they have it. Uh, down down towards Lakeshore, they have it. They actually have a tent garage, a couple tent garages down there that look really nice with the house. Um, as far as I'm concerned, a, few, a number of the houses are like the one, that, or the garages are like the ones that we are gonna build, so that I am uh, proposing to build. So that's, that's about it. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, we'll take this matter to committee now. Who would like to move a recommendation on this? Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Chairman, having having reviewed the application uh, and done my site visit, as well as read the the staff report and, and listened to the applicant, as well as uh, as well as the neighbors, um, as I as I look at this particular site I mean this this is exactly what a committee of of, uh, of adjustment is around for in that the ideal location for this particular garage I don't believe is here um, however the conservation authority has got a, a right away and I as I look at this particular design I don't see any other place to put it so then I have to take a look at what's happening here are we are we overbuilding on the site? Are, are we affecting uh, setbacks uh, in terms of beyond the one that's being requested, which is to move the building forward? And I don't see that happening. In other words, the site, the site is large enough to accommodate a, a garage. It should have a garage. There's other garages in the area. The reason why the garage is being moved forward is because of the conservation authority and uh, they have jurisdiction over that. Um, I think if we move past that argument, whether you know, the, your neighbors agree with it or not, the, the biggest thing that they, you know, the sort of concession would be, well, if I'm forced to have the garage there, I really just want you to make it nicer uh, and, uh, and make it fit in a little bit more and make it more aesthetically pleasing. Sounds to me like you, you know, in your last few comments, oh, you, oh, definitely. you said you would do I, that. I, I, sure, oh, this is our chance now. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> sorry. No, that's okay. fine, that's fine. So, uh, on that basis, I'm, I'm actually going to make a recommendation that these variances be approved, finding they meet the four tests under the Planning Act, uh, and making this subject to uh, our standard condition that the approval will expire two years from the date of this decision if the proposed development does not proceed or a building permit is not issued. In other words, you have to build it within two years. Um, and subject further to the condition here that the pros, proposed garage be constructed in general accordance with the plans as submitted, subject to Subject to the right elevation being revised, do I want to say that? It's, yeah. Yeah, it's a condition that the town. Subject to the right elevation being revised to modify the blank wall feature abutting the streetscape to the satisfaction of the director of planning. Um, I I would also put in, sir, if you don't mind, that you know this will be the the legal constraint, but I I would strongly suggest you you talk to your neighbors because it's a long. You know, it's a long relationship that goes on there. Oh, and just buy, get, oh, oh, get their feedback as much as possible. Okay, so discussion recommendation, subject, uh, uh, approval subject to those two conditions. Seeing none, all those in support? No one opposed? The application has been approved. Oh, Sir, so okay. you have to, uh, again, I, I do uh, 
concur with my uh, colleague here. You know, speak to your neighbors. Um, you know, there's uh, an ability here to make a statement, you know, with the assistance of the director of planning who's going to approve these plans. I think there's uh, uh, some contribution that will, will show good faith on everyone's part. Well, Mike and I have, we have, we've talked and... Uh, continue uh, that. We encourage well, you. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay, he, thank he you. Okay. Oh, have a good night. You. Application CAB 88 2017 at 416 Wedgwood Drive. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Emily Vea, and I'm here uh, from John Wilmot Architect's office uh, representing our client. Okay, uh, thank you. Is the there anyone here this evening that has an interest in application CAVA 88 2017 at 416 Wedgwood Drive? Seeing none. Members, you've done your site visit, you read the staff report, you're familiar with the application. Any questions? <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, what she was saying is, is there anything else you wish to add to the application? Um, I think this morning, it's, it's for this project, I think I, I had submitted, um, yes, I did. I had submitted um, uh, letters of support for this morning. I'm not sure if. Uh, yes, we do. Oh, you do. All have right, it. perfect. Yeah, we do. Okay, we'll take this matter to committee. Who would like to move a recommendation? Thank you, Ms. Michal. Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to move a recommendation for this uh, uh, application as set before us. Uh, I find that the variances requested are, are uh, minor in nature, and they do satisfy the um, the official plan as well as the uh, zoning bylaw. I will uh, move a recommendation to approve these um, variances subject to the condition uh, that the proposed garage addition and elevator be constructed in general accordance with the plans dated April 6th of 2017. And um, uh, that the approval will expire within two years uh, from the date of the decision if the proposed development has not proceeded and or building permit not issued. And I will also note that there are no um, uh, objection from the public. In fact, we have several letters of support um, for this application. Okay, thank you for that. The only thing I want to uh, see if you agree on the modification, rather than say the proposed garage addition, the proposed accessory building, just to be consistent with uh, the language of the well, bylaw. I was reading off of the, uh, of the right now, so if the proposed garage addition and elevator yeah. so I, I believe we're dealing yeah. with an accessory building. But, uh, no. In the comments here, this is what it says. Yeah. Oh, Diane. Yeah, the planning comments are the uh, accessory building. Is that okay with you? That's fine. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, discussion, recommendation? See none. All those in support? No one opposed? Mark? Support. support, no one opposed. The application being approved. Okay, we'll deal with Thank the application CAB 89 2017. This is at 153 Diana Avenue. Yes, good evening. My name is Emily Vea. I'm from John Wood Architect's office. Again, uh, representing the homeowner of 153 Diana Avenue. Okay, I don't think you filed any letters of support on this um, one, or did you? There was one letter of support from. Okay, okay, submitted. there was the one, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, again, uh, just to, on the record, there's no one here uh, on CAB 89 2017 mm -hmm. 153 Diana Avenue. Members, you have any questions, any other clarification, anything you wish to add? We have that letter of support. Um, Thank you. Just quickly, uh, the, the uh, elevator is really for um, a senior couple that, that's moved in. Okay. Okay, we'll take this matter to committee. Who would like to move the uh, recommendation? Mr. Hardcastle? Um, Mr. Chairman, um, Having reviewed the materials, including the uh, letter of support, um, which is from the abutting property owner at 157, the one that would be most affected mm -hmm. by the garage addition component of this, um, and heard, heard the submissions, I'm satisfied that the requested variances conform to the tests. And I'll put forward a motion of approval subject to uh, two conditions, the first being that the proposed garage addition and elevator be constructed in general accordance with the plans dated April 6, 2017 as submitted, and the second being that a building permit be issued within two years of the date of the decision. Thank you. Discussion recommendation? Seeing none. All those in support? No one opposed. Your application is being approved.
Okay, okay thank you we very have much. minutes of, uh, of April 11th and uh, the 25th, I believe. Uh, Ms. McHale, you were not here on April 11th, so you can't vote on the minutes, but everyone was here on the 25th. So who would like to move a recommendation on the 11th, Mr. Hardcastle? All those in favor? No one opposed. Those are approved. And on uh, April 25th, do you want to continue with that, Mr. Hardcastle? Absolutely. All those in support? Okay, that's been approved. And we, uh, before we adjourn, I just wanted to say that um, you guys are very efficient. <laughs> and thank you for making this uh, 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 an easy job to complete. But I also wanted to say that uh, there's times when applications are, uh, you know, like Mark, you brought something up today that would uh, benefit from some additional information just to assist you in a, in, in a decision. And I, and I recommend or commend everyone, if there's a situation that arise, rather than having that type of discussion on the floor where we can't get that information, uh, staff are willing and able to assist. Just fire in an email to our secretary treasurer and she will uh, distribute it to the appropriate internal people. And then that answer becomes something that we all get. And that way we, we, we have the information here in uh, ample time and we don't put our staff on, on the spot trying to answer something that they're not capable of answering or outside their field of expertise. And then that way, you know, we can make the informed decision. So I think today worked out really well, uh, but in the future, keep that in mind. So motion to adjourn. All those in support, we're adjourned. Who adjourned it? Mr. Uh, Hardcastle. You're going to have to watch the video to see that. So my question. Your question.